Greetings, Michael Fackrell here. Have a look with me at Romans chapter 6. Now, I was looking at the verse of the day on the Bible app, which I recommend everyone gets. And it says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So that's a classic scripture, one that's well quoted, and one in which we understand that sin will lead to death. Uh, we deserve death, hell, because of our sin. That's what we've earned. But thank God there is a gift. The gift of God is eternal life, which has been defined elsewhere in John's Gospel as a relationship of knowing the Father and the Son. That gift of knowing God, the Father and the Son, that eternal life, that quality of life, is in Christ Jesus our Lord, and it's a gift. So we've heard this before, most of us, and praise God for this. We've heard it. Uh, but there is more in that chapter that we really ought to consider. And uh, I'd like to just draw your attention to it, to some of the verses around there, because these aren't on your top 100 verse list. Uh, it says, for example, in uh, verse 19, I speak in human terms because of the weakness of your flesh. For just as you presented your members as, as slaves of uncleanness, and of lawlessness leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves of righteousness for holiness. So there's a contrast here between the way we were living or the way people live without Christ and then the way that we are now to live. So it says that, and Paul writes to everybody, so he knew something about human nature and the way it operates. You once presented your members as slaves of uncleanness. So I guess that includes sexual sin as well and the kind of thing like uh, looking at pornography, masturbation, all these kinds of things. But anything that's unclean and anything that's unclean in our thoughts, our words, our deeds, this is what we used to give ourselves to and uh, breaking God's laws and so on and it was a bondage so when you give yourself to any kind of uncleanness it becomes a controlling factor an enslaving factor in your life but because of the gospel and because of Jesus death and resurrection we have the opportunity to enter into Christ in his way where we're not following the flesh but we're following the spirit we're setting our minds not on the flesh, but on the spirit. It, but we have to present our members as slaves of righteousness for holiness. So we have to actually give our bodies to God, including our sexual lives. We need to give to God. And we need to give our tongues to God. We need to give our ears to God. We need to give our eyes to God. And we are living for God now. So there's no... Uh, indifference or there's no neutrality here we can't be free from God and free from God's law and free from uncleanness we're either going to be slaves of uncleanness or slaves of God and just to back that up let's look at verse 20 it says for when you were slaves of sin you were free in regard to righteousness so if people want to be free in regard to righteousness i.e. I don't need to listen to God's requirements, I don't need to be pure, I don't need to do what God wants, I can indulge in some sin. I'm free in regards to righteousness. If you want that, the only way is to be a slave of sin. But Paul asks, what fruit did you have then in the things which you're now ashamed of? I guess things that are unclean are shameful, and they don't lead to anything good. Paul is very direct, he says, the end of those things is death. So it says in another place in Romans 8, the mindset on the flesh is death. The mindset on the spirit is life and peace. So we need to focus our attention on the things of the spirit. We need to focus our attention on the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to focus our attention not on how to gratify sinful desires, uh, whether they be bodily desires uh, or whether they be desires of the mind uh, or they be thoughts of pride or ambition that have nothing to do with God's purpose. We don't want to set our mind on those things, the love of money and so forth. We want to set our minds on what the Spirit desires. And so what the Spirit desires is that we 
uh, draw near to God, humble ourselves, live honest lives of pure love and uh, service for the Lord and for others, and that we have a heart filled with the Spirit of God. Uh, it says, but now having been set free from sin and having become slaves of God. So if you are set free from sin, you are a slave of God. It says you have your fruit to holiness and the end everlasting life. So everlasting life comes as a result of having been set free from sin and having become a slave of God. Uh, holiness is connected with it. So we don't often hear Romans 6.22 preached, do we? But it is there in the Bible, the same Bible that tells us that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life, tells us that you have your fruit to holiness and the end everlasting life when you become a slave of God. So we need to give ourselves to the Lord unreservedly to be obedient. Now we're more than slaves, we're also sons and daughters of God, but Paul says we're slaves of God, so who can argue with that? If anyone wants to argue with that, they're arguing with the word of God. Uh, we have to die to sin. We have to be set free from sin. We can't continue in sin and say that we've got this genuine relationship with God. It's just not a true thing. And that's confirmed in 1 John. It says if we walk in darkness and say we know God, we're lying. So let's not do that. Okay, this is very clear. The fact that these verses aren't preached doesn't mean that God doesn't say them, it just means that people are avoiding unpopular things. Uh, but listen, the way to heaven is narrow, uh, the way to life is narrow, the way is difficult, few find it. So if you want to be sure of entering the kingdom of heaven, give yourself completely to God and reject sin. Uh, so I hope that's helpful to you. Uh, I'm not saying that you can earn your salvation, it's a gift of God, but I'm telling you, you have to give yourself to the things of God, otherwise you're going to give yourself to the things of sin, and whatever you give yourself to, you'll be mastered by. So praise God, if you give yourself to the Spirit and the things of the Spirit, you will have a, a close relationship with God, and this is what the Lord is calling us to. Well, I hope that's helpful to you. Uh, feel free to comment, even if you disagree, and uh, let's have a talk about it. God bless you.